Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Rohil and today I'm going to be speaking about phone addiction, something that all of us mortals really struggle with. Um, I would say in the last couple of years, I've been also struggling with this phone addiction, especially as so much of my work requires the phone and um, running a yoga retreats business and, uh, and now also starting a yoga teacher training we get loads of inquiries loads of messages which come directly to the phone and it's kind of like you have to you have to respond quickly to as most people say it's the best to to be able to help um, get more sales and convert and so on and so forth and and it's also like when you run your own thing and you get a notification that there's somebody who's asking you about uh, the prices or the room or they're really interested in coming for your retreat, you're kind of, um, you know, beholden to, to quickly reply to them because you don't want the, the lead to get cold. So from that perspective, um, I've had to be a lot more on the phone than I would like. And this has actually led me to become addicted in some ways to the phone. So today is basically a sharing of some of my research because I kind of whenever something like this happens in my life I really go deep into it and I try to understand why it's happening what's happening in the brain what's happening in the mind how I can overcome this uh, this pattern and I think that ultimately um, all of you that are watching this video are also in that same state of mind so I'm just here to share um, what I've learned through this process and maybe hopefully this can help you as well in your your journey to quit uh, your phone addiction. So something that I found is that um, according to the neuroscience at least it's that we have these dopamine reward pathways and then you as we as we scroll on the phone we have some novel or new information that we take in like watching a new video or um, getting a, a, a message from somebody it, it kind of spikes our dopamine slightly and it's the same pattern in all addictions so essentially we don't get addicted to something because of the pleasure it causes us but we get addicted to something because of the pain that occurs after that pleasure so when i watch an instagram reel i get a slight dopamine hit and then it comes back down but it doesn't just come back down to baseline levels it goes and dips well below baseline levels kind of like a mirror image of the high so as much as a high we, we would experience that much of a low we experience as well so if you're watching a youtube video and you really enjoy the content in the video it's really nice and, and it keeps you kind of um you're sensorily and you're intellectually kind of engrossed in it and you enjoy consuming that content then for the next few hours after that after you right after you finish the youtube video you're going to experience a little bit of pain a little bit of um yeah essentially what we would call boredom but it, boredom is essentially a kind of uncomfortable unpleasant feeling and we we reject it not not consciously but it's kind of happening at a subconscious level where we are rejecting that feeling of boredom that feeling of pain and we're reaching out to click the next video and the next video or the next thing and and before we know it we've spent 10 11 12 hours in a day on our devices and we are just unable to get away from them we are unable to get away from them when we sit down to eat meals uh, when we are in the bathroom having a shower we, we kind of need it all the time because we constantly need this slight dopamine hit all the time and one thing that i have found is that it's very closely linked also to our nervous system and the general health of our nervous system so if we're really stressed and we're working hard and we're doing lots of stuff um, you know we go through a difficult period in time where we are really working hard we would find I would find that I start to become more addicted during these periods for example we had a few retreats and I was teaching a lot and it was like non-stop I didn't have a day off for a couple of months and by the end of that period I found that I was so much more addicted to my phone and it's essentially when the nervous system becomes more and more stimulated i don't give it some time downtime some high quality relaxation i then find that it's 
uh, it's so much harder to get away from my phone. I am so much more easily getting addicted to watching videos on YouTube, scrolling through Instagram. And it's something that I know I shouldn't be doing at the back of my mind. But it's kind of like you're too tired to, to apply willpower to change that pattern most of the time. And in times when you change the pattern, it's like a never-ending desire to to pick up the phone and, and it kind of, even though I, I don't pick it up a few times, there are enough times that I just give in to the do that kind of desire and pick it up and before I know it, I've wasted half an hour, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever it is. And so the key thing here, I would say, is that what has really helped me personally is to uh, find some time for high quality relaxation. So especially if we've been highly stimulated by work, uh, by traveling, by, by doing activity that is what we would find quite pleasurable. We want to have a time, a downtime, where actually we do boring things, where we do activities which are um, not so pleasurable, which one might subconsciously even consider to be kind of boring, painful. And we want to do these activities, like just sitting and doing nothing, staring into the distance, um, staring at the wall in your room, um, doing a breathwork practice or a meditation or, um, you know, essentially just doing something which is kind of toning down the nervous system, which is high quality relaxation rather than stimulating oneself. So what often would happen is that I finish a long day at work, I'm tired, I want some time to decompress and I move to listening to a podcast or watching a YouTube video. And what that does is it gives me another dopamine spike. It is stimulating in its own way. I know some friends who struggle with video game addictions and they would pick up a video game and start playing the video game. And it's essentially the same thing. We are we are kind of looking for something to, to continue to stimulate our mind so that we don't experience this low or this crash. And another way to think of it is when we think of the sympathetic branch of the nervous system, we have the fight or flight syndrome. And there's a third one, which is freeze. So oftentimes we are, we are busy at work, we are running, getting things done, we have different duties and responsibilities. There's a slight stress throughout our day. And then when we finish, at the end of the day, we come back home in the evening, we're tired. We, we have a lack of willpower, we, we just don't feel our best. We don't want to make any decisions and push ourselves to do things. Maybe we do a half an hour workout and we end up sitting and scrolling on TV or watching YouTube or doing something like that or playing a video game simply because we we go into we continue to perpetuate that that fight or flight mode but now it's in the freeze freeze variation of it so that we are still being stimulated but we are um, we are kind of turning and trying to switch off but it's not a high quality relaxation so this is really really low quality relaxation because our dopamine levels are still staying high which is going to make me much more um, the next morning when I wake up, I'm going to feel a bigger urge to pick up my phone and check my messages, check my email first thing in the morning. And this is going to have a negative impact on my whole day if I end up doing that. And so we really want to bring our dopamine levels down to baseline levels. And to do this, we need to embrace boredom. We need to do things that are really boring. Um, that that you'll find resistance towards doing like eating dinner quietly without watching tv without watching videos um you, you know essentially sitting in the evening for half an hour without anything on your phone away from you your phone switched off your you're just kind of and and the moment we learn how to embrace boredom i think that's the moment when we can overcome our addictions and of course it's it's not something that can be done in a day because to reset our baseline dopamine levels takes a week or two a few weeks and it's always something we can easily slip back into so we need to always be cautious and wary of that so it's like kind of like thinking of it from the perspective of we're driving on this highway and there's a, a ditch or a gutter on the side of the highway 
and we have to keep our, our hands on the wheel because any mistake and we let the wheel we let the car go to the side we are going to fall into this ditch and it's the same with our phone addictions um we want to we want to be really careful about it so now how do we actually stop those addictions so one i spoke about is having a high quality relaxation i would say at least half an hour 40 minutes at the end of our day after which we don't do any stimulating activity so for example you finish your work at 5 or 6 pm you come back home in traffic and so on and maybe you go to meet a friend you have dinner it's now 8 8:30 pm usually the time that that i go to sleep because i wake up really early but for most of us who are sleeping maybe at around 10 11 um that's already that's a good time now 2 3 hours before bed where we can switch off um all these kind of stimulating activities so not consuming a video audio music uh looking at our phone trying to have that strict rule and also trying to do some kind of high quality relaxation at the beginning of that period so you've just finished dinner with some friends and you've come back home and now instead of reaching for your netflix or your phone or something like that for the first half an hour try to do something that's quite boring to be honest so something like um just just sitting and looking at the wall or doing some meditation or breathing practice um some singing chanting whatever it is something that is not a highly stimulating activity and by doing that activity you will kind of help to slowly start resetting your dopamine levels and after you do that make sure not to again move into some stimulating activity you can just do things around the house you can prepare your bag for the next day you can think of what are the important maybe make a to do list of what are the important things you want to tackle at work the next day um you can tidy up the house you can clean up behind you you can spend time with your loved ones so kind of uh trying to stay away from that dop- small dopamine spikes that you can get from your phone so maybe already putting it into airplane mode and switching it off would be ideal um i would also recommend so so i think that that's one thing that's the evening routine so most people speak about the morning routine but i think it's really important to also have a small evening routine having an evening routine make sure that you will uh decompress in the right way without staying stimulated throughout your rest period throughout your night time and then of course the next day when we wake up the morning routine also is i would say the next most important thing is to make sure that the first thing you wake up you don't look at your phone you spend at least 2 to 3 hours uh maybe doing something that that doesn't involve tuning into your email and whatsapp and and all these other things so it could be just switching off your phone in the evening in on airplane mode and not putting it on until you maybe get to work so that morning time could look like doing some meditation or yoga or exercise going out for a run going out for a walk and keeping that period of time in the morning where you're really without the phone really changes the way your whole day goes i have 100% noticed this in times when i'm really addicted to my phone i feel the urge the need to check it first thing in the morning and ultimately the the urge to check it is that slight dopamine dopamine spike that i'm expecting maybe if if i if you run a business it's a, it's a new sale that's come in or or if you are waiting for a message from some of your friends saying something so th- there's always some slight dopamine spike uh that we are looking out for maybe we are following international politics and we want the latest buzz of what's happening uh, and that all those dopamine spikes first thing in the morning kind of derails our entire day so the whole day we find ourselves extremely distracted constantly picking up the phone procrastinating wasting time so it's really important to keep ourselves away from the phone to to set us up for a good day and i think this is kind of like a basic etiquette uh that should be taught from a young age it's it's only our generation now i would say us the millennials the late 80s early 90s and onwards um who really really would struggle with uh, phone addictions of course all generations st- uh, struggle with all kinds of addictions but today we have so much information at our fingertips and ultimately the human brain is designed to to pick up new pieces of information because new pieces of information kind of ensure our survival so if you think of our paleolithic ancestors 
uh, and most most of our the evolution of our nervous system and and brain happened in conditions in which our paleolithic ancestors lived in we were hunting gathering um, and so on and, and and in these conditions when uh, when you're out there in the wild any new piece of information is really really important and crucial for your survival like you find on the on the floor that you're walking on you find pug marks of a of a of a lion a tiger or some big feline and you know that okay there is a big feline somewhere around i need to be careful you'll study the pug marks okay they look quite fresh i need to keep an eye out uh, or you find like some broken twig somewhere which is an indication maybe there was a bear here or something like that or you find the footprints of a deer okay maybe that's something we could we could have dinner tonight or you you see that the vegetation is changing so there must be water somewhere in this area so all of these cues from the environment we've been uh, we've evolved to pick up on so that we can ensure our survival now you put that brain and that nervous system that has evolved in those conditions and you transplant that that body into our current modern conditions where we are being fed with so much information never before in history have we been able to get news about all the different things that are happening all over the world what's happening in in american politics what's happening in the middle east what's happening in um the war with russia and ukraine and and all of this news actually makes it feel like we are there that the, all of these people are part of our tribe and, and and we can't help it because we've evolved taken new pieces of information so we keep consuming this information again and again and again uh and we find it so hard to just put it down and, and get away from it say that okay i'm going to have a detox from all this information i'm going to stop reading the newspaper stop consuming news for a while um and ultimately the most important thing is they still kind of find a way to trickle down to us the the big events that happen in the world people will tell you about it so you don't really have to worry about missing out and and having this period of time where we really detox from news we detox from the social channels i think is uh, is is really important for our long term mental health and stability so i would say that this is also a good good thing to implement or try to implement is maybe having a day or two I'll, this is something that i personally try is having a day uh, in the week without the phones i know it's really hard sometimes um, even for me but i try to make it so that i wake up the, i don't access my phone at all from the time i wake up to the time i sleep so i'm not connected and uh i managed to do it sometimes and the times that i do manage to do it i feel a huge 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 difference um just to how how i feel i feel a lot more relaxed usually i become a lot more sleepy on those days because it's somehow like my body completely rests i allow myself to rest whereas even if i'm lying on the bed and watching a youtube video about something i am not truly resting uh there's some stimulation new information that's coming in and at a time where we have so much information being pushed down our throats into our eyes it's like it's crazy that i think it's really important to take these breaks away from new information entering us and uh, i also really really enjoy for example when i do 10 day meditation retreats like vipassana i enjoy for 10 days being completely disconnected from any new piece of information and it really really helps me i've also found somehow that uh, and 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 some people say that this is not the case for them is that reading for me is really really uh, therapeutic even though it is a form of taking in new information i especially like to read non fiction because i find if i read fiction it's also like causing a dopamine spike but when i read non fiction it's kind of it's it's not so stimulating 
and I find that uh, it's really, really relaxing for my system. So uh, there's something different about reading for some reason, which I can't really put my head around why it is different. But for example, if I take a day off my phone, but I still read on that day, maybe I read from my Kindle, I feel very, very different as compared to even a day listening to podcasts or listening to YouTube videos. There's something qualitatively different about consuming in information through the written format and reading it rather than uh, listening to it or seeing it. So I, I don't know what it is, though, though there are some people who say that reading is not a form of high quality relaxation. For me personally, I would put it into that bracket um, because it really helps me to relax and I feel especially when I read nonfiction. So I mean, these are some of the tools that I I am using to to overcome my phone addiction, and I think it's a it's a regular everyday process because ultimately the thing that we are addicted to it can't be removed from our environment. So even though a phone addiction is not as harmful as say an addiction to a hard drug or an addiction to sex or whatever it is, it's um, even though it's a lower intensity of harm that is doing the, the thing is it's a constant kind of dripping you know this one drop dripping 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 it's like a constant erosion of our mental state and our mental health and it's something that we can't really get rid of for most of us at least you know for work we need the phone we need the apps on the phone we need to be able to check our email uh, maybe our boss may call us when we are off whatever it is we we need access to this smartphone and it's always beside us it's our alarm for when we wake up it's there in our pockets throughout the day is there with us right when we get home it's the one thing that's always on us always with us and so it becomes really, really hard when you're addicted to that thing that's always with you. Uh, how, how, do you how do you cope with it? Because you, you take a decision to stop using the phone and you, you, you implement some of the things I spoke about in this video. But then three days later, you already feel much better. But you can relapse like that because it's so easy to fall back into that, uh, that pattern because it's right there. But whereas, for example, if you're addicted to... Um, to tobacco or to nicotine and you want to stop smoking you, you you chuck all the cigarettes out you have an accountability partner and you would have to go out of your way to relapse in some ways you'd have to go to the street you'd have to buy a cigarette you'd have to put it light buy a lighter smoke it in hiding from your partner and so on so it's it's much harder to relapse from a substance which you can take away from your environment you can you can take away junk food from your fridge and throw it um, but you can't do the same thing with your phone you can't just get rid of it for a, for a few weeks so until the time you're not addicted to it anymore um, you have to kind of sort out that addiction while it's still with you which i think really makes it which adds a new layer of challenge to it so even though it has lesser harm than some of the much bigger addictions i think it's a continuous harm and something that we have to we have to get over that addiction without letting go of that device itself which makes it so so complicated to to do and i i think that um it's an everyday process and and seeing that there is always that danger of falling into it i think is really important so another last thing that i just remembered that i always try um, when using the phone is that if i have to pick up the phone i pick it up for some specific reason so i tell myself that i'm going to access my phone maybe and this is sometimes when i'm working from home what i try to do is sometimes put it inside my drawer in the in a in the in the cupboard and I say that, okay, I'm going to go towards my phone to pick, get my phone. And I want to do these three things. I want to WhatsApp somebody maybe. I want to check my email. And I want to see if there are any inquiries on Instagram, for example. So I do these three things. And as soon as I do it, I finish. I put it on airplane mode and put it back in the drawer. And I found that this uh, helps me, though, though I'm not always... Um, very on point with 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 this habit 
um, it really really helps me as well having some intention of why am I picking up my phone um, helps and I think it's it's about every single day working on that knowing that uh, our lives are so much more than just spending all our time on, on these devices and I think it's uh, it's important to find a boundary away it, it, it's it's also a great thing because here I'm able to speak to you communicate with you you're watching this video and um, all of this is only possible because of these smartphones and they're an amazing tool in our hands but we are essentially not hardwired to be able to use them in a healthy way and so we have to really really be mindful about about these devices and it's an ongoing struggle something that is continuous so if you like this video please leave a like um, if you have any thoughts ideas or you'd like to share something about your own journey with uh, trying to quit your phone addiction please leave a comment and please subscribe so you can have access to my future videos on topics related to yoga personal development meditation and ayurveda and thank you so much once again for tuning into this video and i hope you have a nice day